this is Backyard Tech. Okay, now I need to be a little bit honest here and um, somewhat a little bit truthful. You see, old mate's been a little lazy. Actually, that's probably an understatement. I've been very lazy, which probably won't surprise a lot of people. You see, the fact is, I like to keep all my physical computer machines and virtual machines right up to date. Whether we're talking my Linux physical and virtual machines, whether we're talking Windows, whether we're talking my Unix physical and virtual machines. I like to make sure all the operating systems and applications are right up to date as best I can. But there's one physical machine that I've been very lax in making sure it's up to date. What am I talking about? My VMware ESXi bare metal hypervisor. You see, last year we dropped ESXi 6.7 on it. And remember just before I said I like to keep my machine machines right up to date. Whilst all my virtual machines on ESXi are right up to date, ESXi in itself is far from up to date. So this video, we're going to upgrade ESXi. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Okay, yeah, I know, I've been very lazy. <laughs> very lazy. Like every machine I've got here, um, the media PC, my Windows machine, my Linux laptops, my Unix laptops, all, and, and the like, all the OSs are right up to date. With patches, kernel updates, application updates, Windows, the whole kit and caboodle. But my beloved ESXi hypervisor is still sitting on an older version of ESXi. You see, it's only sitting on 6.7. It's not sitting on 6.7 U1, and it ain't sitting on 6.7 U2. The purpose of this video is to upgrade it to 6.7 U2. Now, why? Well, new VM tools. New stability some bug fixes, the whole lot. I admit I've been lazy, and you guys know I keep all my machines right up to date. I run up, I'm always making sure they're up to date. And, um, you know, especially with Windows. You know, whether we're talking my Komodo antivirus or Windows in itself. Um, sure, I get lax with the Windows updates, and I do a when I get around to it, but I normally don't leave it over 12 months before I update any of my machines. So, the purpose of this video is to upgrade ESXi from 6.7 to 6.7 U2. Now, I've got it on a, a disc. We're going to head out to the uh, hypervisor and uh, run the upgrade. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so... Here's my hypervisor. Time's out, but I'm not too worried. I might actually fix that. What is the time? 8.32. Oh. It's actually the, it's not Friday, I know that, it's the 13th, there we go, okay, so, DVD drives the first one, What we want to do here is run the upgrade 
on it. Sorry for the extra camera shaking, but it is really cold here in the workshop. <laughs> like, it's about 4 degrees outside Celsius. It's about, what's that, about 39, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and I'm, I'm actually shivering at the moment. So, let's get this loaded and then we'll come back. Alrighty. I'm slowly getting there just for everyone that's my ESXi it's an Altos AT350 F2 oh that was a worry I didn't see that error message I may have to go to U1 first before I do U2. Uh, okay. Upgrade and preserve VMS data store. Yes. Jeez, I hope this works. Confirm the upgrade. The installer is configured to upgrade your... F11. There we go. Upgrading. Alright, once this is done, we'll come back. Well, that was nice and quick. So, we'll now remove... If I can find the damn button... Remove the installation media, which is what I'm doing at the moment. Find the installation media and go with the reboot. Now, what we're also going to do here too is, um, let's put that in there for the moment. I'm going to change the password and everything for ESXi because I've been using an old password and it's one unit that I didn't change the password on, so I'm going to do that. And then we'll uh, we'll go back to the desk and um, have a sticky beak about the uh, have a sticky beak. I'm sorry around the web interface. nine-year-old mega raid system <laughs> all my drives they're my two raid configurations both raid 5 because obviously I've only got four drives per adapter and there's two LSI adapters in there as well so because I've only got four drives I can only run raid 5 can't run RAID 6, can't even run RAID 50. Actually, the RAID controllers don't even recognize RAID 50. Loading ESXi. Let's just hope this loads. Thing with this server is it's not, apologies for the blur, but that's better. The thing with this server is it's not exactly hyper powerful, but it's very stable, which is what I like. It's very, very stable. Initializing timing. Two Xeon E5 2609s at 2.4 gig. So essentially eight 2.4 gig CPUs. ProcFS. No jump start. Very different. Oops. 
I need to look that up. There's the NSF4. So there's the NSF4 client is actually the, uh, for those that aren't aware, is actually the Ethernet system. Funnily enough, some people, well, I knew it was the file system, but then again, I've been playing around with ESXi since, I initially thought five, I think I've been playing around with it since in, uh, ESXi four and using it since probably, well, using it as a hypervisor platform since 4.5, I think. All right, let me do the passwords and everything, then we'll go to the desk. All right, passwords changed, which is good. So now I need to escape out of that. And there we go. All right, so you can see there I've got a new build, 1300-6603. So ESXi 6.7.0 U2. Let's, uh, let's go to the desk and see if anything has changed from a um, web user inter interface point of view. All righty, so pretty much what I'd expect from a login point of view. ESXi's login hasn't really changed of late. <laughs> let's, uh, oh no, that's the wrong password. What did I just change the password to? <laughs> oh, um, is that it? Yes, it is. I've just changed the password and instantly I almost forgot it. Okay. Well, from a UI point of view, it doesn't look actually any different. To be honest. It doesn't look any different at all. Wow. Yeah, not much has really changed, has it? See there, it's update two, but at uh, June five last year, date and time's wrong again. The BIOS is getting old, but I'm not too concerned about the BIOS. Interesting. So the UI hasn't really changed. I didn't think it would. Their user interface from a web access point of view hasn't really changed of late. And I mean, to be brutally honest, it's actually, look, I'm trying to figure out how I can actually describe this. I'm not surprised it looks the way it does. Um, I, I, I can understand it and the thing with ESXi is I've been playing around with it long enough now I can understand everything and work with it but there we are so new VM tools or an update to VM tools um, and that's funnily enough this is when I actually installed ESXi initially so I've gone over a year without updating it which might explain why some of my machines haven't worked as well as they probably could have late re VM tools. So there we go. Very happy with that. Part of the other reason of updating ESXi to U2, right? Um, because we're going to look at Debian 10 and Peppermint 10, so Debian Buster and the like, I thought before we do the system setup and product reviews, I probably would want to run the upgrade of ESXi. So there we are. ESXi 6.7 U2, old mate's updated the only machine he had that was out of date, at least from an operating system point of view. But there we are. Anyway, the update to ESXi done. Stick around. Uh, we've got two system setup and product review videos coming up for you today and theoretically a bizarre news story, if I can find it, which is what I forgot to mention during uh, the promo. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.